to keep things make sure to keep things going good evening folks for the audience joining us on youtube i'm meteorologist corey thompson here in the tv9 newsroom we are talking about Friday's severe weather risk across the area. That's Friday, March 31st. It is uh, probably about 24 hours away from when we're talking now, when we'll have storms across eastern Iowa. And so that's what we're looking to head toward over the next uh, 12 to 24. It's pretty substantial risk for severe weather. Let's get back into it in terms of the severe weather risk as listed by the Storm Prediction Center. You can see it here. En encompasses basically the entire TV9 viewing area in some risk category or another. The red area is where the risks are the highest. That is from about Highway 20 to the south between Dubuque and Waterloo and areas to the south from there. So a good portion of eastern Iowa includes Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, Washington, as well as the aforementioned Dubuque and Manchester. Areas outside of that in the orange area have a slightly lesser risk of severe weather, but both are pretty substantial and both in terms of what could occur and the severe weather types that could occur are worth watching. It's the threat for damaging winds and tornadoes that we're most concerned about, especially across the red highlighted areas. That's where the risk is the highest. As we look ahead over the <clears throat> uh, specific threats for this storm system, again, high wind is a pretty substantial threat as are tornadoes. They're probably about the same in terms of importance. Large hail, still a threat, and it could be quite large at times but it's a slightly secondary risk. Heavy rain, not the biggest concern with this system, just because storms will be moving so fast, it'll be hard for them to drop a huge amount of rain in any one location. And of course, we still have been relatively dry uh, with drought conditions in many cases too. So in terms of the threats, as mentioned, it's really the high wind and tornadoes that we're watching, especially depending on how storms evolve. If they become a line and move across the area, the wind threat would increase somewhat. If they say a little bit separated, little different individual cells moving across the area, the tornado risk would be slightly higher. But overall, the risk in general is fairly high. So that is one thing that we'll be keeping an eye out. Just a, fresh, a refresher, it's Severe Weather Awareness Week this week. We've been talking about a lot of this stuff this week, but the first thing that will likely be issued tomorrow for your area is a tornado watch. If it does come out, that means that you should start to pay special attention to the weather around you and that conditions are favorable for severe weather and tornadoes. The next would be a tornado warning for a storm that carries the risk for a tornado. And that would be in, in in an area especially where uh, risks are higher for damage from a tornado and a threat to your life. That would be as it's been spotted by a human or by radar uh, from a distance. A third and something that has basically almost never happened in eastern Iowa, something called a tornado emergency. The only case in the TV9 viewing area where this has been specified by the National Weather Service is the Marshalltown tornado in 2018. Of course, that turned out to be an EF3 tornado, so a very strong one. Uh, it's when a damaging tornado is moving to a populated area. So if you hear those words on Friday, uh, that means that the situation has become quite serious. You need to take immediate action uh, to stay safe. And during the day on Friday, I want you to keep multiple ways to get the information that you need. So if you're out and about, if you're at work or school, of course, if you're a student at school, you'll be kept safe by your staff and teachers there. But if you're at work, you need to have a couple of different ways to get weather alerts. And that would be the KCRG TV9 First Alert Weather app. If you have a weather radio in your office or home, make sure that is on and alerts are switched to on. Same story with the weather app as, to, as well. You need those alerts to be turned on to get your information that you need to stay safe. And of course, I, warning sirens are meant to alert you if you're outdoors. They're not the most reliable way to get the information indoors because sometimes they're hard to hear. So Midway Futurecast, looking ahead, this is tonight. We will stay quiet for the next few hours this evening with just a mix of uh, clearer skies and clouds. But notice by about 11 o'clock, we start to see an increase in the amount of green that shows up on pinpoint future cast scattered showers and storms likely develop as we head through the overnight hours these are likely to be not severe there's the chance for some heavier downpours plenty of lightning to go with them most likely and the potential for a little bit of small hail as they develop too those will be moving to the northeast sort of regenerating over the same areas so this will be our best chance to get a little bit more of a substantial amount of rain out of this system as it's the afternoon storms, they'll be moving rather, rather fast to the northeast. So by late morning, we're expecting a bit of a break. Notice how there's a little cluster of activity that Pinpoint Futurecast wants to develop around lunchtime and shift to the northeast. Even behind that wave, there's a little bit of clearing. And in these types of situations, any clearing is 
the fuel that this, those storms need to stay strong to severe and any clearing can contribute to a situation getting a, li a little bit more dangerous. So we'll be watching that very carefully in the morning to see if we see some sunshine ahead of these storms. So by two o'clock, that's when things will likely be um, very much worth paying attention to. Storms, storms moving from the southwest to the northeast at about 50 to 60 miles per hour at least. And they will be packing a punch, likely damaging winds that could be above 70 miles per hour. And tornadoes are a distinct possibility too. Likely some redevelopment too as a front moves through central Iowa. So it's those isolated storms that we see here in eastern Iowa in the middle of the afternoon that could carry a particular tornado threat. Uh, and then the secondary line coming through in the evening that could have a bit more of a damaging wind threat there too. So you notice at four o'clock, still widespread storms, especially in that uh, moderate risk area that encompass, encompasses most of eastern Iowa and moving to the northeast. From there, about five or six o'clock is when they'll start to move out. So even by seven or eight, which is uh, good news for folks that wanna catch the Iowa women's game and don't wanna have to think about severe weather at the same time, looks like that will likely be out of the region by then. In fact, cooler and drier air will be wrapping into the region as that happens. And by late Saturday night into early Sunday morning, or Saturday morning, rather, we could be seeing isolated snow showers. Not expecting significant accumulation there, but there could be a dusting of snow when you wake up on Saturday. It still is a very much springtime storm system, and that will move on pretty quickly in the morning. So again, in terms of timing for these types of storms, early in the afternoon on the western fringe of the TV9 viewing area, though there could be isolated storms that develop out ahead of it, but the main thrust of that activity between about two to four o'clock, you notice this line in the middle, about four to six. So we will have that potential going forward too. So that four to six lines of route cuts right through the center of the uh, TV9 viewing area. And then to the east as it exits about six to eight. So we're giving a little buffer zone there for the eastern extent of it as it moves away. So that's the time frame that we're looking at on Friday. And of course, if you do find yourself in a tornado warning, you need to get to the lowest level of your home. Get under something sturdy if you have it, like a desk or a workbench or any other sort of substantial piece of furniture that you can crouch under. A staircase is decent too. That gives you another layer of protection above your head. A bike helmet helps keep your head safe too. That is not a bad idea to grab. And of course, uh, blankets, pillows, and other soft items like towels or something like that certainly do add a little extra layer as well. Stay away from windows, doors, and outside walls. If you don't have a basement, uh, get as low in your structure as you can and away from exterior walls. Those are the least safe thing to stay near and head to an interior room. The most walls you can put between you and the storm is a great idea. So that is one thing that you should keep in mind. If you're at home, that's that part in the middle of your house. Again, basement is best, but not every house has a basement. We acknowledge that. So it's that interior hallway or room. Bathroom can be good, but stay away from one that is on an exterior wall if you can, because that still can be safe. I know some people say it's the pipes inside that keep you safer. Yeah, that does help, but uh, even if it's on an exterior wall, that can still cause some trouble because those are the first to fail uh, when a tornado hits your house. Usually the roof has the most trouble first and then the exterior walls and then uh, from there on. So that is, again, the basement is your best place. If you do not have a uh, basement, then uh, again, it's the interior room. If you're in a mobile home, you got to get out of it. That is not a safe place to be during a tornado, even during very strong damaging winds. We saw that during the 2020 derecho. Uh, mobile homes sustained significant damage just with the straight line winds we saw there. So why are we seeing such a uh, strong amount of severe weather tomorrow, or at least the potential? Well, we're going to have all the ingredients in place. These are the dew, dew points. I'm actually going to run it back to currently. Our dew points are in the 30s and low 40s. So that has increased since yesterday. We had very dry and cool air yesterday. That's already changed thanks to the southerly winds that brought in warmer temperatures today. But even by tomorrow morning, we're talking dew points into the mid and upper 50s in eastern Iowa. So yeah, you'll probably notice a little bit of humidity as you head out and about on Friday morning, but it won't change much from there. They could even go up a few more degrees by the time we get to the afternoon. 60 degree dew points this time of year, plenty humid for severe weather because all the other ingredients will be present as well, including uh, pretty strong winds at the surface and they'll generally be from a southerly or southeasterly direction. So that's your starting point at the ground where the where severe weather and tornadoes uh, develop. Up above though, very strong winds from the southwest. And so when you go from that southeasterly to southwesterly direction, you get a little counterclockwise turn into the storm that's developing. So that's the wind shear that we talk about. This is the kind of thing that sets up the potential for rotating storms, which can cause tornadoes as well as large hail. Otherwise, we're just looking at a day where all the ingredients are coming together. And at this point, it looks like they will come together for severe weather. Now, 
in the aftermath of storms. I know we're talking about this. We would appreciate your pictures. Send them to KCRG.com slash or you can get the KCRG TV9 First Alert weather app, which you should have on your phone, and swipe down and check out the section that says U News. There's a link there, too, that you can send it to us. Do not, however, take any unnecessary risk to get those photos. If you're in a place that you are threatened by severe weather, wait till it passes uh, to get pictures like that. So let's recap. Severe weather risk on the day will be fairly high as we head toward the afternoon. Again, this area outlined in red is the region that is most likely to see severe weather tomorrow, but that doesn't mean that if you live outside of it, you won't. In fact, it's still a pretty good risk uh, for the areas in orange, uh, a day that will feature the potential for damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. And against those two threats that we're watching in particular, both centered on that red moderate risk area uh, in, for, in terms of the highest concentration of high wind and tornadoes. The reason why there's those little black dashes on your screen is because the Storm Prediction Center believes that the risk for particularly severe outcomes is a little bit higher. So winds above hurricane force is a possibility. Large hail up to two inches in diameter or larger is a possibility. And stronger tornadoes, so that would be an EF2 or higher, are a possibility. It's all because of the ingredients we have in place. And so that's why we are trying to emphasize that this threat is uh, pretty substantial as we head toward tomorrow. So going forward on Pinpoint Futurecast one more time, the timing of storms tonight will be after dark, in fact, closer to midnight, where scattered showers and storms will develop. Again, this first round, not severe. That will be the time period where we'll see the potential for heavy downpours as well as some small hail. But the risk for severe weather doesn't increase until tomorrow afternoon. Notice how the activity starts to diminish by later in the morning. Uh, with a little bit of a potential of activity as soon as noon tomorrow uh, around lunchtime. There could be a few isolated storms, but the better risk for more widespread severe weather arrives by about 2 and between that and about 7 o'clock. Notice how that activity really ramps up between about 3 and 4. Little lines of storms or multiple little individual cells that could produce damaging winds and tornadoes during that time as well as the threat for large hail really start to develop then. As they shift to the northeast, this is 5 o'clock. The threat will start to focus a bit more toward our eastern and northeastern counties, stretching from around the Fayette area toward Manchester and as well closer to the Iowa-Illinois border. And that will continue to lift to the northeast from there. Notice by about 6, starting to cross out of the TV9 viewing area. By about 7 or 8, I think we're really starting to see the severe weather threat here locally diminish almost completely. So yes, that is the uh, amount and the potential for severe weather that we're facing. Of course. What you can do is make a plan. The best way to stay safe is to have a plan in place. We talked about the severe weather safety tips that you can use, and that's one of those things that you have to incorporate into your plan. So make sure that you discuss with your family this evening what to do when a tornado warning is issued. That would be a good way to get that plan ahead of time so everyone can stay calm, avoid panic as uh, storms move in. Of course, the best way to stay calm is to have an idea of what you're gonna do. We will be providing updated coverage throughout the evening throughout the day tomorrow. KCRG.com will have the latest information as we have it, as well as on KCRG TV9. Meteorologist Joe Winters will be providing another update on YouTube Live coming up at 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday. The additional information as we have it, and of course, if weather does turn severe, we interrupt on KCRG TV9. If tornadoes seem possible, we also interrupt and we stay with you until the threat has passed. We want to keep you safe. That's the goal, and that's why we provide updates and briefings like this and continuous coverage when needed. For now, though, thank you for joining me. Again, stay safe tomorrow. It's a day to pay attention, and we will help to and we will help you in the effort to stay safe across eastern Iowa. Have a great evening.